I wasn't suggesting the president's not a Christian. I accept the fact that the president's a Christian. I've repeatedly said I don't question the president's faith. I've, I've repeatedly said that I believe the president's a Christian. He says he's a Christian, uh, but I am talking about his worldview or his um, uh, the uh, the way he approaches problems in this country, and I think they're they're different than how most people do in America. Welcome back to Morning Joe. Joining us now, the president and CEO of Samaritan's Purse and the president of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, Reverend Franklin Graham. Also with us at the table, the host of MSNBC's Now with Alex Wagner. Every day at noon on MSNBC, Alex Wagner. Every day. Good to see you both. Okay. Uh, Reverend, uh, we'll ask you the question that Senator Santorum was asked on Sunday there. Do you believe that President Obama is a Christian? Well, I think you have to ask uh, President Obama. Uh, you, you can ask me, do I believe you're a Christian? Um, I think the best thing for a person is to ask you directly. So I think people have to ask Barack Obama. He's come out saying that he's a Christian. So I, I think the question is, what is a Christian? So you don't take him at his word when he says, I'm a Christian? No, of course I do. I was saying, uh, every, you have to ask every person, but he has said he's a Christian, so I just have to assume you know, th that he is. But the question is, what is a Christian? And a, a Christian is a person that believes that Jesus Christ is God's Son who died on a cross for our sins, who God raised to life, and that if we put our faith and trust in him, that God will forgive us of our sins. Now, that's the definition of a Chris Christian. And I was 22 years old uh, when I asked Christ to come into my heart. You cannot be born a Christian. Uh, you can only be uh, converted, and that is by putting your faith and trust in Christ. You, you've said in the past that the president is Christian in as much as he goes to church on Sunday, but you don't know if he's accepted Jesus Christ. Do you still believe that? I, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I asked him when he was running, uh, when he was a senator, I asked him how he came to faith in, in Christ. Uh, he said that he was working on the south side of Chicago, uh, in, in the community, and they asked him, the community asked him what church he went to. He said, I don't go to church. Uh, then they said, if you're going to work in our community, uh, you have to join one of our churches. And of course, then he joined um, the, the Reverend Jeremiah's church. So, I mean, that's what his, his, his uh, answer to my question was. So therefore, by your definition, he's not a Christian. I mean, again, you have to ask him. Uh, I, ca I cannot answer that question for anybody. All I know is that I'm a sinner, and that God has forgiven me of my sins uh, because I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's all I know. I, I, I just don't get it, Reverend. I, I don't mean to, like, harp on this because we have other things to talk about, but why can't you just say, yeah, I believe he's a Christian. He said he's a Christian. He goes to church. He practices his faith. And I, and I don't all, get it. And that's all I can go on. And, I, and, I, and I tell, I've told people this many times. I, I, I accept him as, as what he says. If he says he's a Christian, I accept that. I'm not going to say he's not. All I, can, all I know is what Jesus Christ has done in my heart and how he changed my life. You've said in the past that President Obama's father was Muslim. Yes. So that, that President Obama has the seed of Islam, I believe is the way you put it, in his blood. So do you believe no, there's a chance not, not he's in Muslim? His, no, no under, under Islamic law, under Sharia law, uh, Islam sees him as a son of Islam. Because his father was a Muslim, his grandfather was a Muslim, great-grandfather was a Muslim. And so under Islamic law, they, the, the Muslim world sees Barack Obama as, as a Muslim, as a son of Islam. That's just the way it works. Uh, that's the way they see him. But, of course, uh, he says he didn't grow up that way. He didn't believe in that. He believed in Jesus Christ. So I accept that. But I'm just saying the Muslim world, Muslim world, Islam, they see him as a son of Islam. But you do not believe no. he's a Muslim? No. Categorically not a Muslim? Well, uh, well I can't say categorically because uh, Islam has gotten a, a, a free pass under Obama. And uh, we see. How so? Well, we, we see the Arab Spring, and coming out of the Arab Spring is the Islamists are taking control of the, of the Middle East. And our pe the people like Mubarak, who was a dictator, but he kept the peace with Israel. And the, and the, and the minorities, uh, the Christian minorities in Egypt, were protected. Uh, now those Christian minorities throughout the entire Arab world are under attack. And a Newsweek magazine last week cover story was the massacre of the Christians in the Islamic world from Europe all the way through the Middle East, Africa, uh, into Asia and Oceania. Muslims uh, are killing Christians. And uh, we need to be forcing, and the president can come out and make a statement demanding that if these countries do not protect their minorities, no more foreign aid from the United States. They are not protecting the minorities. Uh, Muslims, now, the, the society in these Islamic countries is not protecting the Christians anymore. So e you, each, well, I'm sorry, Alex, I'll let you get it. So Egypt and the world, in your view, a better place with Osni Mubarak in power? 
uh, having a, a government that protects uh, the minorities, yeah, absolutely. And what you what you're going to get now, and the the government of, of Egypt right now, the military government killed 24 Christians right after cr Christmas because their churches were burned and they were burned and they were rioting, and the government came and and, and slaughtered 24 Christians, and 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 they're doing nothing to protect. It. Read Newsweek magazine. I'm not giving. I mean, I'm not making this up. It was front page cover story last week in Newsweek. So what do you say to the millions in the streets, not just of Egypt, but across the Middle East and North Africa, who say Osni Mubarak was bad for us and we wanted a change? What do you say to those people? Well, you're going to get a change, no question. Uh, there's a lot of bad people in the, in the world today. Uh, every country, and you go to every Muslim country, uh, there's, there's most every one of them have uh, leadership that is... is, is not what I'd call great people. But you have to deal with those that are in power, and uh, hopefully the people that are in power are going to protect the minorities. And, of course, Christians in the, in the Arab world or in the Muslim world are the minorities. But you take Egypt, I think it's like 13 million, uh, the minority. You take Nigeria, I think it's 80-some million, but they're still the minority. And uh, these Christians are having their churches that are being burned, uh, they're being raped, uh, the women are being raped, they're being murdered, because under Sharia law, a Muslim can take a Christian's property. He can take a Christian's wife. He can take his daughter under Sharia law. And this is what's happening. The governments are not able to protect the minorities in their society and are unwilling to protect them. And I'm just saying if a government is not going to protect the minorities, then we should not give them one dollar of U.S. aid if they're not going to protect the minorities. Okay, I have more questions, but I want to get Alex in here. <laughs> Alex. Uh, well, I, I guess would you align yourself with the comments made by a few in the Republican Party that President Obama has been an appeaser? Well, I don't know if he's been an appeaser or not. That, I, I, don't, I don't like that word so much. Um, but Barack Obama is, a, is an incredible man. He's got a lot of ability, and he's got the power of the White House. He could be speaking to these countries right now, demanding that they protect the Christians in those countries. And uh, he's been quiet about it. Uh, we have uh, uh, an aid station in southern Sudan, a place called Yeda. Uh, the Sudanese dropped bombs on it uh, right before Christmas. We have a Bible school inside the South Cordovan. Uh, just two weeks ago, the, the Sudanese Air Force dropped eight bombs on that Bible school. But why doesn't the, the president come out and, and try to bring peace to the Sudan? Why doesn't he but bring Bashir and Sabakir together? Been, uh markedly active on the issue of Sudan. Back when he was a senator, he was holding bipartisan press conferences trying to draw global attention to what was going on in the situation. He's pursued very robust action at the International Criminal Court. Susan Rice has been incredibly tough on the issue. Um, he's been pretty engaged on that part of the world, given the fact that we don't have, quote-unquote, necessarily strategic interests. Well, first of all, I, I'm, I'm not sure he's been engaged in, in so much in the Sudan. Uh, he could be much more engaged. I believe I believe the, this is the, uh, the, the longest-running war in Africa. Uh, I believe that he could bring this thing to an end because I know South Akir in the South is the president would like to have peace. I know that Bashir in the North, he would like to find a way out. If he had a Camp David kind of summit and brought these people to Camp David and bring the governor of South Cordovan, the governor of the Blue Nile, I believe within a couple of weeks they could resolve this with the president's help because each one of these men would like to find a way out. But they've been fighting for so long, they don't even know how to, how to talk to one another. The president could show leadership, and I think he could bring the longest struggle in Africa to an end, and I, and I believe he could do that. And I wish he would. I hope he would. Michael Steele's with us in Washington with a question. Michael. Reverend, good to see you. Uh, quick question on the um, matter of faith uh, and, and this current political uh, cycle we're in. I was talking with some young people recently, and, and their response was very interesting. They said, you know, at the end of the day, I, I go to church on Sunday, and so my preacher, my rabbi, my imam uh, on a Friday will, will lay out the message. I don't need a politician uh, telling me how to live my life and, and, and drawing those lines from me. As a man of faith in the cloth, do you see that um, encroachment uh, by politicians into what is arguably your territory of, of laying out the, the, the indictment for uh, matters of faith and morals and leave the policy to the politicians and, and leave the faith issues to us? How do you see this commingling that seems to... Uh, continue to rear its head in, in American politics. Well, thank you. No question, uh, the government is overstepping. And you take the contraception issue with the Catholic Church. This is a big issue, and uh, the government uh, and, and the Obama administration has has overreached right here. Uh, as a Christian and, and as a person who runs a a 
uh, a charity. Uh, I'm afraid that the government is going to come at some point and tell me who I, I can hire, that I will not be able to discriminate against people who don't believe the way I believe. And there's a lot of people that I don't want working for me because they don't believe uh, that uh, in the, uh, they don't have a, a faith in Jesus Christ and uh, their moral standards are not going to be the same as my, my standards. And so we are going to be forced, I'm afraid, Michael, in, uh, under this administration sooner or later uh, to, to hire people that we, we are not going to want to hire. And we see this already coming and on this contraception issue, which is a, uh, it's just a terrible thing for the administration to be involved in. Government needs to stay out of those things. Alex? Uh, are you, do you think that when you look at the current crop of candidates and what looks to be a, a potentially long and drawn out battle, this thing may last until June, do you think that, the, that Rick Santorum is, getting to, is going to be a stronger candidate or Mitt Romney is going to be a stronger candidate at the end of it? They're all getting uh, stronger. Uh, Mitt Romney is stronger. I think Santorum, no question, is stronger. And out of all of this process, whenever it's finished, I think you're going to have a much stronger candidate, whoever that person is. Is there one candidate who shares your beliefs more than another? Um, oh, I, I would say on moral issues, uh, no question, uh, Rick Santorum. Uh, he's a very, uh, you know, very sharp guy. Um, as far as a Christian faith, we would be more in line. But all of them is when it comes to policy and running the country. You've got to have a person who can make the decisions that's best for all of us. And I think all the candidates that are running are capable men, uh, no question. Before we let you go, we had talked about this briefly off here. How's your father? Uh, he's, he's doing well, thank you. Ninety-three years old, and um, he's, you know, he's, just, he's working on another book, so he's, he's still at work. <laughs> Works a few hours every day. Please give him our best. I do want to ask you one more question before we go. Do you believe that Rick Santorum is Christian? Oh, I, I think so. So how do, you, how do you know? If the standard is only the person knows what's within him, when you apply it to the president, why is it different for Rick Santorum? Well, because his, his values are, are, are so clear on, on moral issues, no question about it. And uh, I just uh, appreciate uh, the, the moral stand that he takes on these things. Uh, so I, I believe that he is. Uh, he comes from a Catholic faith. I, I'm, I'm Protestant, so there are a lot of differences between what he believes and what I believe. Uh, but yet I think he's, uh, I think he is, uh, no question, I believe he's a man of faith. When you that is an amazing double standard that you just applied. Um, the, the, your reaction to, the, that's really set that up, your reaction to the difference, the, the question about Rick Santorum and President Obama, um, I think just exposes an incredible double standard you're applying to those two people. They're exactly the well, same situation. Well, no, I asked President Obama uh, how he came to faith in Christ. And he was said, I don't go to church. Have you he had that said, conversation with Rick Santorum? I, I've talked to Rick Santorum, yes. And, and he was just more persuasive to you on the depth of his sincerity on this question? Well, I, I think so. Um, but you have to look at what, what a person does with his life. Uh, anyone can say that he's a Christian, and, but you look at do they live, where, where do they go and act? Listen, Obama is a nice man. I've met him but you think on several acts, occasions. you think he behaves in an unchristian he is a, way? No, he is a nice man. He is a, and his wife is a class act, and their kids are class. You, you can't help but like them. Uh, so I have no idea what he really believes. And I really don't have any idea other than what, Rick's, what Rick Santorum stands for or what he really believes. But I just feel in my heart, okay, as I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you, as, a, as you're asking my opinion, I'm just giving you my opinion. I think Rick Santorum is a, a, is a fine man. Reverend, what about Mitt Romney? I like him. Is he a Christian? Uh, he's, he's a Mormon. But he's said that he's part of the Judeo-Christian faith. Do you take him at his well, word? Well, uh, no, but the, most Christians uh, would not recognize Mormonism as part of the Christian faith. Um, so he is not a Christian. Uh, I'm just saying most most Christians would not recognize Mormonism. Now, of course, they believe in Jesus Christ, but they have a lot of other things that they believe in too that we don't accept uh, theologically. But he is a he would be a good president if he were the nomination. Because uh, I think the man has got the, you know, the, the ability, he's got the, the strength business-wise, uh, political-wise, he's, he's a sharp guy. And he's proven himself. Any one of these candidates, Newt Gingrich, all of them, now Newt's been married several times, he's had those issues, but he, is, he could make a, a good candidate. Um, and I think, uh, I think Newt is a Christian, uh, and, and he was, at least he told me he is. So Newt well, Gingrich is a Christian, yeah. but you're not Christian. sure that President Obama is. No, I'm, I, ba and this, you said based all, on the way they've lived their lives. All, all I know wow. is under, under Obama, uh, <laughs> President, Obama. They're, they're, they're President Obama, excuse me, you're correct. 
Uh, President Obama, the, 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 the Muslims of the world, uh, he seems to be more concerned about them than the Christians that are being murdered in the Muslim countries. That's what bothers me. You, you must spend an awful big part of your day checking off uh, what you conceive to be people's depth of faith in terms of measuring. Well, this is my business. I mean, you guys go through the newspapers every day. You know, you're checking off uh, articles that are written. Um, you know, I, 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 I look at a person's uh, political interest, but more importantly, I look at their spiritual interest. But you judge and measure I don't faith. judge. I'm not judging. You're asking me questions, okay? I'm not judging them. But you, you, you have to go by what a person says and uh, how they live their life and where they go to church. Are they faithful churchgoers or do they just go when the cameras are on them? That sort of thing. We could, we could go on with this for, for a yeah. long time. Yeah. Until next Sunday when everybody's going to church. Oh, or maybe not. All I know is I'm a Christian and, 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 and I, God has forgiven me that sin and I don't deserve it. But it's by His grace He's forgiven me and He saved me. Well, we hope you respect people of all faiths. We do, sure. Do. Reverend Franklin Graham, thanks for being with us. And again, our best to your father. Thank you. More Morning Joe in a moment.